We started with one location in Tillamook. And we've grown it now to seven locations, all on the coast and then also in um, the McMinnville area. After World War II, my grandpa came to Tillamook and he started an appliance business and uh, fixed appliances and sold TVs and the whole works. My father started uh, the appliance business in 1956. So in 1995 or in that area, uh, we bought the appliance business from my parents. And then we bought Roby's. But before us, um, it started in 1950 with a guy named Roby O'Bean. So Roby O'Bean, who was the founder of Roby's, um, through a family um, connection to Tektronics, the computer company, um, Roby's cousin, as I remember it, was um, one of the founding members of Tektronics. They wanted to pay costs for furniture for all of their offices. So they started a store and they happened to locate it in Tillamook. And then the people of Tillamook thought, hey, this is kind of cool having a furniture store here. So they opened it up as a full line furniture store. That was part of his contribution, I guess, to the Tektronics beginning of that. So he started the furniture store in Tillamook and eventually his son-in-law, Bob Rigert, bought it. And in 95, we bought it from Bob. I know that Bob found a 1973 butterscotch love seat. And we got to buy that too. <laughs> we bought all the inventory. So we bought every single piece of everything. But anyway, we, we gave a whole lot of it away in the beginning and, and started over. In this building, we've been here two years. I mean, I, I was born and raised in Tillamook, so this is like my homeland. This is where I grew up. This is where Grandpa and Grandma live. This is where my parents still live. So this is coming home to me. And it's kind of cool to um, have this beautiful new building to be able to say, awesome, we like built that. And we, we like stretched out of this one little community and we've impacted other communities. And yet to come back to this is pretty cool. I was in college and I was on my way back from Los Angeles. I think by the time I was at Roseburg on the way home, my dad called me back and said, hey, crazy thing, the people that own both furniture stores in Lincoln City and Newport just called me and asked if we'd be interested in buying their store. The next one was Florence. After Florence, we had the opportunity to um, obtain a store in Astoria and then in 2017 we just added a store in McMinnville that was called Rice Furniture. When we went um, to McMinnville it was um, kind of like the same story that we've gone through. Our really strong connection there was that we had to, one of our best friends and he was really good friends with the owner of Rice Furniture and he just said hey you guys need to connect on this because it, it, it should be, this is a store that you guys would be perfect in. And we got a phone call from Steve and all of the family were like, oh, No, we can't do we, it. How do we make this happen? Yeah. Like, there's just no possible way. All right, let's go have dinner with them. And we did, and we all got in the car and like looked at each other at the same moment and said, how we, do we make it work? Yeah, we have to do this. And so we did it. Real early in our company, the, uh, the appliance companies were really big on spiffs. Our concept with advertising is mostly about top of mind awareness and hopefully about creating like a friendly space for people to basically get to know us a little bit better before they walk into the store. We don't often have huge like deal, 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 like 
um, sales because that, we don't think that's healthy for our business. We don't think that's a healthy way to purchase things. Um, right. And so we like to have a fair price all the time. Really the way we've grown our business with our vendors is a, as a partnership. You know, we're going to agree to this and as long as we know that there has to be some wiggle room on both sides and it works out well. Well, from a customer's perspective, we probably do more than most stores do with our whether it's our take it back guarantee, um, our use don't lose. So we have a really cool take it back guarantee. We take anything back within 10 days. It allows people to um, shop with us, know that if you get it in your house and you just hate it or you live with it for a few days and it just isn't the right fit, then it's, it's all good. You can just switch it out. We probably take back things that 99% that of other stores would not take back, but we want people to come in here and have a good experience. Um, and if they don't, we've, we've majorly failed. Our dad, he would do anything. I mean, he would, um, sometimes we have to tell him to like go home because he would like just give everything away. We're like, dad, we're still trying to actually make a profit here. <laughs> You know, I, I remember going to work with him as a kid and, and he would go drive, you know, 40 minutes out of town to do a service call and, and we'd show up to the lady's house and my dad would go in there and he would talk to the lady and, and she'd say, well, my, my wash machine's not working and he'd go back there. He would see that, you know, whoever hooked up her, her um, wash machine hadn't done something right, he would fix it on the spot, and he'd turn around and walk out, and he wouldn't charge her a penny. We try to train our team members to understand that concept. Like, this is, so much of what we do is a service. Even though we're selling products here, what we built our business on was service and being, being a servant to people, and when, when you didn't rightfully need to charge them, you didn't charge them. My dad taught me a lot about how to handle people, and his favorite thing is you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. My dad is a, is a servant just in life. I mean, it's not just with uh, fixing appliances, but that's who he is. in regards to like our team members. We want to have fun. I mean, we want this to be a fun environment. And I think we do. In most of our stores, people are laughing and, and joking. It's important to have fun at work. We sometimes jump on mattresses and <laughs> have potlucks. Sometimes when they're working there, you can go into the warehouse and play with cardboard and bounce on the beds when there's no customers. It's really fun. We try to get our team involved at each location to do a barbecue or we did a, a turkey cook for Thanksgiving and it's fun because then they all get to bring a dish. We have a great team. Um, it's really exciting every day. Really it comes back to the idea of the business is to make sure that the health is there for the core of all of our people. We definitely want to make sure we own all of our properties that we move into. It's, it's ideal for us that way we can make sure that we solidify those positions for our employees. We also offer 401k and health for our employees. So we definitely believe that we want to just offer more than a wage. You know, we want to offer a culture. We want people to be excited about coming to work for us. Also, um, we're closed on Sundays. One of my advertising guys say to me, so what, why are you closed on Sundays? But Andrea developed a, another little slogan, instead of closed, is out to live. You know, I'll never forget that my mom said a long time ago that for what we have, the way that we can honor God for what he's done for us is to be closed on Sundays. Her best friend that sits 
10 feet away from her said she could quit if we ever open on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another incentive, God and Lloydine. <laughs> We do a lot of donations. Uh, in, in Tillamook, we have a big charity drive every year through the high school that raises tons of money for Dornbeckers. This started with a combination of, of what Andy did at George Fox. So we all went to George Fox and they do a serve day every year. So that's where we got this idea. So we close down on a Wednesday. Usually it's the last Wednesday in January and each store does a community service project. When we first started it, we had like one message for all the stores. I think we did foster families the first year because my, my parents were foster parents. And we've, we've done a lot of really fun projects. This year we worked at a um, retirement home. Mm -hmm. and just did all sorts of little projects for them and they were so nice to uh, they had Chinese food that day and they wanted us to all eat lunch with them and so there were probably 15 of, of us eating with all of them and it was it was, it was good. a good day it was really fun good day. did you expect your children to be running the business at this point no no, <laughs> no. nope we didn't see oh. that coming I'm in awe sometimes when I just see everything that they're accomplishing and, and their ambition and, and their willingness to grow and look at new, new ideas. Um, what's exciting for me is that we have the opportunity to impact 75 employees and then that's just employees and then think about the customers that we can like hopefully knock the socks off of them. We're always trying to like make sure that we're keeping up with the times. One of the things that we have seen over the past few years is that mattress companies are popping up all over the place. We were seeing um, a decline in our mattress business at, as a furniture store. And so what we have done is we've rebranded our, our stores as the mattress shop at Roby's. And so now we are, are technically a standalone mattress store. Um, inside Roby's. And so that's been the way we've kind, kind of combated that challenge. As of right now, I would say it's the, the, the health of our team, our team members. The cohesiveness. We have some really educated people that have been here for years that can help our young people grow. So I'm really happy with the balance of people we have top to bottom. Yeah, I, I'm excited about um, being better. I want to improve, I want to fine tune things and clean things up and take one thing that maybe we haven't done well and turn it into a positive. And you know, we went through the recession and as we we're getting through the recession, we were learning about all the mistakes we've been making and we are fixing those mistakes and because we we're forced to, we, we had no other choice but to be better at what we did. and. That stuff really excites me. It's it's changed. You know, business has changed. It's it's a risk, and and to be successful at business, you have to be kind of a risk taker, willing to work hard enough to give it the very best shot. <laughs> the doors that open daily, weekly, monthly. I mean, we don't know. We love selling furniture and making people's homes great. I think there's a lot more to that, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah, we have we have a lot to be thankful for. So, yeah, see what the future holds. It makes me think a lot, you know, like gosh, I you know, there's a lot of pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of opportunity. Yeah, it's more opportunity. <laughs>